Welcome back everyone to my reloading bench. If you guys are interested to see how the ammunition that I loaded in the three different die sets that I showed you earlier, the Hornady Custom, Match, and an Elite Ultimate, and my Ruger Precision Rifle Chairman 6.5 Creedmoor, stick around. Welcome back everyone. I want to start off today, thank you all new subscribers. Subscribers are still increasing. I hope you guys are finding these videos interesting. Um, if you're new to the channel, uh, check out the content that I've got out there. If you want to see more stuff like this, some other load data that I've got out there, consider subscribing to the channel. So now that the commercials are over, today's video is going to go over the ammunition that I loaded in the previous video of the three different die sets. We are going to discuss the results and the possible things to think about between these die sets in different considerations when we were loading. I will say if you guys haven't seen the first video, think about stopping right now, going and watching the first one, and then coming back to this one. Yes, I know that video is 20 minutes, but that way you'll kind of understand where we're coming into this video, where we're coming from, and understand kind of how we got here. I will tell you guys, I've actually had kind of a start of making this video a couple different times. Um, after I loaded this ammunition, I thought about going over, you, I mean, you guys can see on the bench, I've got my concentricity gauge out. I thought about going through all the concentricity, and that footage was unfulfilling to say the least. And so, in the interest of not putting everyone on the channel to sleep or losing my audience in the first five seconds of the video, I'm just going to summarize this in the video the best that I can. Um, please try and be patient as we go through this. I do think that some of you guys are actually going to find the results very interesting. I know I do, but the process it took to get there isn't really entertaining, but I think it's important that we go over it. Um, so among the things we're going to kind of discuss, we're going to talk about, again, like I said, the concentricity. We're going to talk about what varies in these die sets a little bit as far as what the end product came out to be and um, kind of how we got there and talk about the velocities and the deviations and things like that. Now guys, our test projectile was our arch nemesis, the 143 grain ELDX. Um, yes, we kind of picked this one because it was the one I was having the most problem with. And maybe an unfair advantage to the Hornaday die set, I did pick up the specific seating stem for this projectile. One of the reasons why I bought the sets to begin with is because I was having such a uh, problem seating these. And I wanted to get the specific seating stem for this projectile and see if it would actually seat them and have better concentricity. So guys, the load that we put in all these cases was 44.7 grains of superformance at a coal of 2.80 inches. Just like our load, if you've seen the video on this particular load before, we loaded it to 2.800 Fed 210 primers. I'll put the, a quick shot on the screen so you guys can see it. I'll leave time here so you, the regulars can sigh. Yes, I know another superformance load, but guys, I wanted to pick something that we'd had reasonable luck with in this 143 grain ELDX because I didn't want a complete trash can fire, or at least that was kind of my goal. So moving on, in hindsight, maybe I should have picked a different powder, maybe a different bullet combination that I, I've had better consistency with in the past. But honestly, it's kind of why I bought the seating stem, kind of why I went in this die sets. And so this is the bullet that I kind of wanted to illustrate with. And personally, it's the one I wanted to see the test results on. So if you guys don't want to see it, you guys don't have to, but I did it. In hindsight, maybe I should have picked a different powder bullet combination that I've had better consistency with in the past, but I was really hoping to have a definite, irrefutable test result, and unfortunately, the best laid plans of mice and men are often about the same, guys. So I've kind of let the cat out of the bag. These are not going to be one whole groups at 150 yards. So when we loaded the ammunition, we loaded it with each brand solution. So the lead die was done with the sizing die, was done with the, the bullet seating stem, etc., etc. The 6.5 Creedmoor custom die set was sized with a custom die set. The match was sized with a match die set. Of note, guys, when the brass was sized for this experiment with the match grade die set, the expander ball was not installed. After we'd done the sizing with the bushing, we didn't expand it back with the expander ball. Um, and you'll find out later in the video why that's important, so stick around, guys. So like I said, every brand kind of used its own. When we did the bullet seating for the Hornady, we used the actual same uh, setup simply because you can use the same seating stem in both die sets. If you were going to buy Hornady dies, you could buy that seating stem regardless of which solution that you picked. Like I said before, if, if you guys have been, are a fan of the channel, you've heard me say before that I really wasn't thrilled with the bullet seating stem. I'll put that vi picture up again. Um, I put it up in the last video so you can kind of see why I went this way. This 143, it really didn't fit in the lead bullet seating stem very well. And it kind of left a little circle on top of the projectile. And so I was hoping that I was going to see a significant difference um, when we loaded with the Hornady dies. 
So for this test, I loaded a total of 50 rounds. The match die set actually had 20 rounds and the Lee and the Custom only had 15 rounds each. I just had 50 pieces of brass to play with and that's what we loaded, guys. After loading these rounds, honestly, I was really hoping to see a significant improvement with the Hornady seating stem on this projectile as far as concentricity was concerned. But it really didn't happen. Now with the match die set of our 20 rounds, all but one of the 20 measured less than 2 thousandths in variation. Only one round actually measured four thousandths out, out of round. Surprising, un, unsurprising, you guys draw your own conclusions. Out of the 15 rounds of the lead dies, produced some of the best results, with all of the rounds measuring like one and a half thousandths or less. Now, the custom die set kind of was a big loser. Out of 15 rounds, five were three thousandths or more, with one round measuring as much as six thousandths in variation when we had it on the concentricity gauge. So, not all that spectacular. But like I said, keep in mind too, the match die set didn't have the expander ball installed, and so it was just the neck bushing that was doing the sizing. And so, as things have happened and, and things have progressed on the channel, guys, it was not until I'd actually already shot all these rounds and I actually started playing and measuring stuff on my neck wall thickness gauge. And so, I really didn't have a good starting line. I didn't, I hadn't sorted any of the brass to know if there was any rounds that had more of a neck thickness variation than the other. I really don't know that because I really hadn't started measuring anything until after I had actually shot this. After I started measuring things on, on the neck wall thickness gauge, then I really thought that maybe the neck thickness variation was not very good and might, maybe this was contributing to my concentricity not being as good as I had hoped. So the next step, I was going to start playing with my neck trimmer that you see on the bench here too. After I got some brass, I deprimed it, cleaned it, and resized it. It's not really until then that I figured out that each one of these three die sets actually gives you a fairly significantly different neck tension on that projectile after the sizing process. This wasn't so obvious to me until I actually put it on the mandrel on our neck turner over here. So after I've said all this, realizing and knowing what you know now, maybe this data will make a little bit more sense. But to walk you through this guy just real quick, um, I, I prepped the vid in the video of I've sized each one of these pieces of brass. You'll see if I put the lead die, the, this has been sized with the lead die, pop this on here, and you'll see, actually see it's pretty loose. And there's actually a significant amount of play on the mandrel when I put this thing on here. Now in the custom grade die set, this one won't even start on there. It's, I can't even get it centered. I can get it stuck on there, but I, I really can't get it to hardly even start on there. And then for the match grade die, I can get it to start, but it's real stiff on there and it, it's real hard to get started, but I can just start feeding it. So the custom die had the most neck tension. The match grade die, sized with the 288 bushing, had the middle neck tension and the least neck tension was actually on the lead die set when we look at all these. And this will come into play later. It did not get tested in this, but secret option number four because I wanted to see what would happen. I put the expander ball back in my match die, I sized the piece of brass, and then magically it comes out somewhere in the middle. So actually it's pretty, on the mandrel anyway, it slides on there really nice and it really doesn't have, you can see it doesn't have a whole lot of slop. So for what that's worth, you guys can see what that is. So basically we've got four different methods of sizing brass to a specific thing. Obviously I have different bushings for the next sizing and so maybe that'll be one of the next things that I do. So anyway, that was why the, the neck turner is on the bench. I've said all of that to finally get started in the data, so thank you guys for sticking this far. We got a little bit further to go. Let's look at the custom dies first. The, the custom group, I shot each one of these in different in three five-shot groups, except for the match. Obviously, there was four five-shot groups, being there was 20 rounds. I'll put the data on the screen. The velocity of the first group was 2676, standard deviation of 8.7, extreme spread of 21. 0.903 MOA group for the custom group. The next group, average velocity of 2694, standard deviation of 13, extreme spread of 34. That group, 0.881 MOA. The, the last group for the custom group was averaged a velocity of 2690 feet per second, standard deviation of 20.6, an extreme spread of 50, and that group opened up to 1.164 MOA. So guys, moving right along, we'll look at the lead dies next. 
Um, the first group had an average velocity of 26.72, standard deviation of 25.8, extreme spread of 71. Now the next group had an average velocity of 26.55, standard deviation of 5, and extreme spread of 13, and that group was 0.907 MOA. Now the last lead group had an average velocity of 26.81. I will mention very importantly here, guys, that I had a user error, my malfunction, and missed the velocity on two of these shots. So this group is contaminated with two different loss of, uh, of data. However, it certainly wasn't going to help the extreme spread. Maybe it would have helped the standard deviation. But at average velocity of 26.81, standard deviation of 26.6, and extreme spread of 52. Um, obviously, you can still see all five holes in the paper, 1.09 MOA, so not horrible, but certainly, you know, the worst data gave the worst group in that case. Let's move on to the last group, the match dies. Again, there were four or five shot groups with these, so as you can see on the screen already. Um, average velocity 26.93 of the first group, standard deviation of four, extreme spread of 10, but a group size of 1.22 MOA. Um, next group, 26.58 feet per second, standard deviation of 11.7, extreme spread of 27, but a much better group at 0.594 MOA. Uh, next group, 26.74 feet per second, standard deviation of 18.2, extreme spread of 44.819 MOA. Um, next group, 26.82 feet per second, standard deviation of 7.4, extreme spread of 18, and a 0.907 MOA group. So guys, now that all that data is out there, I was going to try and summarize the data sets a little bit, kind of like try to look at the groups as a whole, and then also realize that match die set does have a couple more data points, but the data is what it is, and so we'll just go from there. If we average all of those out, um, I realize it's probably not the best thing, but if we add all those numbers together and then divide by the number of groups that there were, the custom dies gave a 0.982 MOA group, the Lee was a 0.945 MOA group, and the match uh the match dies gave an average group size of 0.885 MOA. Now there's no real significant difference in the performance, but slightly I guess maybe the win goes to the match set, but I certainly with this data set wouldn't say, oh my gosh, it was the clear winner. Um, funny enough, it the match set possesses both the best and worst five shot group, though I'm certainly never going to claim either that my shooting didn't move any of these groups around regardless of which die set shot them. Um, looking at the velocity, honestly, guys, here is what I thought you guys would find the most interesting. I know I found this to be the most, in most interesting. So if you actually average all of the shots that were shot that we have data on, again, my goof on the lead guy dies, guys, but it is what it is. But if we average all of the velocities out, I'm going to put another chart up there for you. So the average velocity from the custom die sets were 2687, a total standard deviation of 15.9, an extreme spread of 54. Those just magically happened to have the most neck tension out of all of them. Now, next came in, let's talk the match die set. At 2677, the standard deviation of 16.8, extreme spread of 56, and somewhere in the middle, for the neck tension. I could try and show this on here with my calipers and I just don't think it's a very good thing. The best I could tell, maybe it was a half a thousandths difference um, for what that sizing operation does, but it, obviously the lead was significantly more um, that it opened up. So again, and so the last group on there, 2667. Standard deviation of 21.5, extreme spread of 71, and the lowest neck tension out of all of these. If you guys watched the previous load with two performance with the lead eyes that I did with this exact combination, the average velocity on those was 2667. So in that five shot group, we actually averaged the identical velocity that we had from that group. I wanna hear what you guys think in the comments below. After all it's done, I'm really not sure there was a clear winner. If you look at the data, the match maybe had a small leg up on the competition. All in all, there was no real clear winner, no real clear loser. I do think that possibly if we did some more testing with the match dies and ran through different bushings on there, we actually might get some interesting data. I thought it was interesting nonetheless that basically the average velocity varied with neck tension. Yeah, and if you guys have any insight on this experiment, tell me what I did wrong, tell me what I did right. Besides this being a complete trash can fire of an experiment, let me know in the comments below what you guys think 
what you guys took out of this video. If you guys see something today that I'm missing, let me see that too. I can't say that I made any definitive answers. To be honest with you, I'm probably going to be going exclusively with the match grade dies. Um, I do think they should give a better product, and but maybe I'll do some more testing in the future and find out. Thank you guys again for watching the video. Thank you guys for subscribing to the channel if you have. If you guys haven't yet, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video if you liked it. Thank you guys again for sticking it out for the whole video. And I hope to see you guys next week with another video. Stay safe in small groups.